Hi, this is Dr. K from my medical school here with a video to help you achieve the best score you can on your step exams. Make sure to share, like, comment, and subscribe, and listen to our podcast, iMedical School, on iTunes. There are seven key pieces of advice to help you ace any of your step exams. Now, some of this advice you may have heard of, and some of you may have not, but either way, I think repetition is always key to help it sink in. The first point is to start preparing early. The earlier you begin to think about the step or board exams, the more time you'll have to plan and adjust your studying to focus on the topics that you need more help in. This seems like an obvious piece of advice, but many people do not start thinking about step one until six months prior to the test. I would start preparing at least one year in advance. Now, this does not mean you are setting a grueling pace of studying more than one year out but this will at least give you enough time to plan appropriately. Speaking of planning, the second point is to create a plan or schedule. Creating a plan lets you know whether you are on track as you are preparing. The plan will make sure you review all the material you need to cover while devoting more time to more complicated or high yield subject matter. One of the biggest errors in creating a plan is being overly ambitious with the plan. If you are not realistic when creating your plan, you will become frustrated when you're not able to keep up with the unrealistic, vigorous pace you set. The more frustrated you become, the less likely you will want to study for the step exams. Make sure to write your general study plan down in a convenient location. I personally love Google Apps, so I use Google Calendar and Docs to create both a daily and monthly schedule when I'm studying for board exams. Remember, it's always important to schedule in break time, meal times, and most importantly, time for exercise. Another reason a plan is important is that with a plan, you can go over high-yield material multiple times, which brings me to the third point. Repetition is key in medicine. You will see throughout your career that everything you learn in medical school is the same material each year, followed by repetition with a little bit more detail added each time. Repetition solidifies ideas in your head and allows you to remember without much difficulty. When preparing for your step exams, if you review your notes and review materials several times, you will have a much better grasp of the subject matter. Each time you review the material, try to pick up points you missed previously and annotate more. The more you review a subject, the more of a concrete grasp you will have. To help with repetition, I make cards of high yield material. In fact, I use cram.com to make sets of flashcards that I can access through my iPhone. Using digital flashcards allows me to study whenever I even get a free moment. There are other digital card sites like Quizlet or Study Blue that work well too. The fourth point is focus on your weaknesses. When we study for any major tests, it's easy to study the material we are comfortable with because It makes us feel good to get questions right and to think in our head, oh, this material is really easy. By focusing on our strengths, we will be lulled into a false sense of security. Focusing on the material that you do not do well with will lead to a much higher score. As you focus on your weak spots, make sure to spend time and really try to understand the material rather than trying to breeze through it so you can finish it quickly. This is another area where I use flashcards. Making flashcards of high yield material that I'm not really confident in helps me use repetition to remember these key points. In addition, you can also use Google Slides and make summaries of disease processes that you have trouble with so you can review them on the go as well. The fifth point is do as many practice questions as possible. I think this is by far the greatest piece of advice. Keep in mind, just pushing through questions to complete 1,000 questions will not help you much. You first need to be doing active learning with questions, such as identifying key points. Generally, after doing a set of questions in a given day, I will make note cards that highlight the key points of the questions. This helps me review these important points quickly when I'm on the go. In addition, make sure to time yourself when doing a set of questions. When it comes to test day, you will be nervous and you will have a time crunch, so you should practice this time limit when you are doing questions. Also, make sure to take full practice exams that completely simulate the real test. Try to set a test day where you will just take a complete test. Take breaks and eat a similar lunch like you would on test day, as this will help you simulate the actual test day. 
Doing practice questions has so many benefits from pointing out highly tested material, helping you identify weaknesses, and training you to pace yourself. As you're doing questions, also create your own flow in how you tackle questions, which is the sixth point. Personally, I read the last sentence of the stem of the question because this sentence usually asks me what they want you to answer. Then I look at all the answers quickly. With this context, I then proceed to read the stem of the question. Given these tests are multiple choice, by reading the question and answers, first, I already know the answer now. I just need to see which answer choice fits the stem of the question. In addition, many times the stem of the question is long and has nothing to do with the question asked. By reading what they want and the answers, I can sometimes answer the question without even reading the stem, which saves me a great deal of time. The seventh point is to set a test date. If you do not set a test date, you will never feel the pressure of needing to move through the material in time to be ready for the exam. Remember, be realistic about setting a test date. However, for many of you, there is not a lot of variability due to the need to take these steps during your second and third year or in your fourth year of medical school. Well, I hope this helps study for your exams. If you like this video, give it a like, share this video with your classmates, place a comment down below, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from My Medical School, and I'll see you next time.